Welcome to the Billionaire Belief Show. This is Dane and I'll be your guide today. Thank you for tuning in. Billionaire Belief is an entrepreneurship development guide that shows you how to make the transition from student to CEO so you can have a clear path to building a profitable and professional business you love to own that works without you. Today's topic is how to find a mentor as an aspiring entrepreneur. Let's dive on in. Today, we have four points to cover. And as always, we're going to start off at point number one. Actually, we have a point zero today. And that point zero is understanding the importance of mentors, coaching, perspective. So I have a question that I want to ask you before we dive into the points. Let's say you have a kid or, you know, your uncle or, you know, you're just someone in charge of students um, or kids. And the kid, one of the kids comes up to you or your kid comes up to you and says they want to play a sport like basketball. My question to you is, more often than not, what's the first thing you're going to go do? Think about it. More than likely, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go try to find the best basketball. Let's just say basketball is a sport. It's one of my favorites. Let's say, uh, you know, it's basketball. So first and foremost, you're going to go find either the best basketball team you can find and or the best basketball coach you can find for your kid. Now, why do you want to do that? Well, you want what's best for your child or this this kid that you're overseeing, you're looking after. And you know that since you don't necessarily have the, the knowledge and expertise and skills to help them become a better athlete, a better basketball player, you want to make sure that they get involved with someone or, or, or get mentored or coached or tutored or trained by someone who has some level of, of knowledge, understanding and expertise of the sport so that their, their progress, I can say, uh, or, their, or, or the process in which they need to go through and learn to improve their skill set. You know, they can have some sort of clear path. Now, before I even bring this next point up, I, I just want to admit that, that I have been guilty of this. But the point is, now let's segue to us as adults. Question. Why is it that when we as adults decide we want to do something like, let's just say, become an entrepreneur, which is something that we don't necessarily have knowledge, skills, and expertise in, why do we tell ourselves we don't need a mentor? We don't need a coach. We don't need a, tu a tutor. Why do we tell ourselves we can just, quote unquote, figure it out? We can just read a book and know everything we need to know. Or we, we, we can just operate off of what we know, which is limited knowledge, what we, what we think we've heard or, or what, we, what, what, what someone else has told us about entrepreneurship. You know, why do we do that? Why don't we put ourselves through the same process that we will put, you know, a kid that wants to learn how to play basketball? Because if you are fresh into entrepreneurship, you know, something that you've never done, it doesn't matter if you were raised in it, you grew up in it, you know, there's still some things you don't know that you don't know about entrepreneurship. And until you get with a mentor or a coach, you're just going to be spinning your wheels. And, and I can attest to that. <laughs> so you might think that it costs too much like I used to. But here's what you got to think about when it comes to, to, to the investment, as I've learned. Well, which one would you rather have if let's just say, you know, again, let's take our basketball example. Or we'll just stick with entrepreneurship. So you want to be an entrepreneur. Let's just say you want to, you know, you want to start a, a notary database. If you wanted to start this notary database, which is basically going to be a, 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 a location where companies that need notaries can come to you and they can find out uh, and, and they can get a notary to, and you will send a notary out to them to go you know, notarize their documents. Let's say that's your business. That's what you want to do as an entrepreneurship. You're fresh, you know, fresh uh, into it. Like I said, you've, you've worked a couple jobs here and there, but you know, you're, you're 
practically brand new to entrepreneurship. And like I said, you got an idea for a business and you just don't have a clear path to get started. Would you rather, quote unquote, you know, take a course or read a book and then just go off on your way? Or would you rather be mentored, coached, tutored by someone who has a, a, a similar business to you, but they've spoken to a thousand title companies? You know, they've spoken to a thousand realtors. They've, they've spoken to a thousand uh, money lenders. You know, they, they, they have the perspective of, 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 of having all these conversations like which one would you rather pick? Me personally, I'd rather pick the coach. So when it comes to investing in coaching, mentorship, things like that, don't look at it at the price as what it is, just this big number that you makes you feel uncomfortable in most cases. Even if it's fifty dollars an hour or five hundred dollars an hour or in some cases fifty thousand dollars an hour. What you gotta keep in mind is the outcome that you're trying to achieve. So if you're trying to achieve a six-figure outcome, then let's just say if you want $100,000, then you think 10% of that would be a worthy investment in, in getting you there? So $10,000, maybe $5,000, maybe even $1,000. If, if, if you could speak to someone and after that conversation, you'll have the confidence and courage, knowledge and insight that you need in order to make hundred thousand dollars you know would it be worth you would it be worth it to you to spend ten thousand dollars to give them ten thousand yes <laughs> whether it's ten thousand five thousand three thousand one thousand a hundred dollars you know it will be well worth the investment so don't discount coaching or don't think that it's something that you don't need like yes you need coaching like your your the kid would need coaching you know, from the best, ideally the best. So the same thing applies to you in entrepreneurship. So let's talk about how we can find a mentor, a coach, something to the, something along those lines so that you can ultimately improve your standings in the game, in the real estate game, so that, you know what I'm saying, you can, you can make your journey a lot more smoother and you can actually achieve your goals a lot more quicker. All right, so point number one. As I said before, um, when when you work in a regular job, a quote unquote nine to five, it's really easy to get a mentor because you're around a lot of people who do a similar you know job that that, that you do, uh, and they've most likely you know you're gonna have people that have been on that job longer than you, so you know it's gonna be easy for you to find someone who who's willing to take you underneath their wing and show you the ropes, so that you can make a way for yourself. And understand the value in that and understand that you have that access and that ability because of the nature of work that you're doing. Again, you know, employee, if, if you're going to be someone's employee, then more often than not, you know, you're going to have a lot of people around you. You're not going to be going out alone. But then when we dive into segue now into point number two, when you are an entrepreneur, it's a lot more challenging to get a mentor only because you're pretty much going at it alone. You're pretty much doing this by yourself. Why? Because to be an entrepreneur is not the norm. The norm is to be an employee. So that's why there's so many resources to help people become an employee. And that's also the, the flip side of this, why there's so many limited resources for you to become a entrepreneur because it's not the norm. It's not, it's, it's, it's not the usual path. So it's going to be that much more challenging for you to find a mentor. But don't fret. Don't get discouraged. Don't allow fear to, to guide your thinking here. Like, I, like we talked about in previous episodes, you know, think through courage and confidence, not fear and greed. And realize that there's somebody out there that's, that's waiting to mentor someone just like you, believe it or not. They're waiting. They can't, you know, they're, they're, they're waiting. They're hoping for it. You know what I'm saying? Like they're, they're wishing upon a star that they can just get in contact with somebody like you who can, who they can share all of their perspectives, their insights, and all the things they discovered along their entrepreneurial journey to help clear a path, to, to help you, to help make a, a path, a, a clearer path, I should say, for you to achieve your business, for you, to, for you to achieve your business goals and achieve your level of business success. But, you know, you're going to have to put the work in and go out there and uh, find them. You know, that's the caveat there. Unlike being an employee where you're pretty much just around 
your potential mentors. When it comes to entrepreneurship, you know, you're going to have to actually go find these people. All right. And understand that, you know, when you when you go in to find these people. You're going to most likely more than likely you're going to you're going to have different mentors as you progress through the different phases of the, you know, beyond aspiration roadmap, because, again, the mentor that helps you get from student to worker might not necessarily be the best mentor to help you get from founder. I mean, from worker to founder, and that mentor might not be the best mentor to help you get from founder to CEO. So you're going to more, more than likely need to, to get new mentors as you progress through the through the roadmap. But you also, too, want to stay connected with the, the you know your previous mentors, because, again, they're still going to have a lot of wisdom to share with you. They're still going to have a lot of you know new discoveries to share with you as they're continuing along their entrepreneur journey. So. Be mindful of that. Like, don't just be so quick to kick them to the curb because you feel that you've leveled up. Because at the end of the day, don't just look at them as a mentor, but look at them as someone that you want to have a relationship with. Because that's really the big picture here. You want to build relationships with these people. You just don't want them to be a quote unquote transaction. Because when we, when we just operate as if the person we're dealing with is just a transaction, you know, we there's really not that much greatness that could be achieved in that in that situation but when we start to focus on building a relationship which is what business and entrepreneurship truly is truly all about that's what that's where the magic happens so don't discount the the effort that you need to put into finding these mentors and then once you get them like i said preserve them and as you're leveling up like don't kick them to the curb because you know there's still some 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 knowledge and wisdom that you can gain from these individuals which brings me to the next point, point number three. And here's actually one of the, the caveats of finding the mentor. In the beginning, as well as the, the, through different, you know, as well as the other phases of the journey, what you, you, you have to understand is that, you know, there's going to be plenty of times where you're not going to, there's going to be things that you know that you know. There's going to be things that you know that you don't know. But the, 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 the caveat or the thing with the asterisks on, on it is, there's also going to be things that you don't know that you don't know. And that's why the mentor is, is essential because there's blind spots. There's pot, there's pit, uh, there's, there's blind spots, there's potholes, you know, there's blind corners that you just don't know exist. You know, there's blind spots that you just don't know exist. You don't know that you don't know that they even exist. And so you might be out and about doing your thing, not realizing that, you know, you're operating within the blind spot, which is why you may not be achieving the level of success that you desire for yourself. But because you have a mentor, someone, quote unquote, looking out for you, they're going to be able to point that blind spot out to you. So you can a acknowledge it, identify it and understand how to avoid it so that you don't find yourself spinning your wheels at the end of the day. So never discount that. Un never discount the fact that there are there are going to be plenty of times, plenty of moments where you, there will be things that you don't know that you don't know. So that's why it's also going to be important for you to keep an open mind. Whenever you feel like you're receiving knowledge that is counterintuitive or the opposite of what you have convinced yourself to believe in, don't be so quick to discount that information or just write it off. Because again, you know, there's things that you don't know that you don't know. So you might be feeling these initial, this, this initial di desire to, to repel, you know, this information or this knowledge that you're receiving from your mentor at that point in time. But understand that, again, like at all times, there's things that you don't know that you don't know. So as so now that you're aware that there's things you don't know that you don't know, you know, now you won't be tripping yourself up or trying to you know, be at being an all out, you know, uh, you know, argument in a sense, which is mentor, because they're trying to give you some game that's going to help you move forward. But just because this game is going against what you believe to be true, you're just resisting it. You know, you're telling them no, or, you know, you're telling them, you know, just these, 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 <laughs> you're just being resistant and closed minded at the end of the day to the information. So don't do that. Understand again that there's going to be things that you don't know that you don't know. And that's why you got a mentor to help you acknowledge that these things are point these things out to you so that you don't ultimately be the obstacle that keeps you from moving forward in your entrepreneurial journey. So point number four, let's talk about some action steps, some things to keep in mind 
as you are on your journey to find a mentor. Because again, like you're gonna have to go out there and find this. And again, you're gonna be operating in the, from the from the perspective that you don't know what you don't know. But in the beginning, like you said, no matter uh, you have to know what transition or what phase of the of the beyond aspiration roadmap you're you're actually at in order to make sure you find the appropriate mentor. So if you are that student who's making that first shift from student to worker, then those you're gonna you're not gonna have too bad too bad you know too big of a problem finding a mentor for that. But as you're starting to make them, them transitions from from a worker to founder and then from founder to CEO, you know, you're going to really need a tailor-made mentor who can help guide you and assist you, you know, through those transformations because not everybody is going to be able to do that. And now that you have at least perspective on the journey ahead, you know, you that 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 alone should help you be able to pick a better mentor cuz for me when I was growing coming up when I first was younger and decided I wanted to be an entrepreneur, like there was no, I, you know, I had no concept of, again, the beyond aspiration roadmap. Like I, I, I didn't know that I didn't know that those were the, 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 the transformations that I was going to need to go through in my mind. It was just like, well, I just got to have a business idea and, and start the business. And by starting the business, just, you know, something that simple, at least in my mind, filing some paperwork and then saying I was in business and then printing, I was printing up some cards and just passing them out so I can get some clients. Like, that was what I thought needs to happen. And that's what most people think needs to happen. But that is what you think needs to happen because that's typically what we think that we know based upon what we have, what we have observed or what someone that is an, uh, an employee has told us. So be conscious of who you're getting your information from as well. You know, um, even though a, a broken clock is, is, is correct twice a day, you know, Every every person pretty much has some information and knowledge to give you, you know. Even if they're a, a, a failure, quote unquote, you know, they have some very insight. If anything, they they can tell you what not to do. So don't ever, like I said before, don't ever discount knowledge. Don't ever discount wisdom. Don't ever discount insight. And a lot of the times, you know, don't don't be in this state of mind where you are quote unquote in the sense like sizing someone up and just telling yourself well like oh well they don't they don't meet you know they don't have this or they don't have the type of outcomes that I want so it's just really no point in me even paying you know paying them any attention or because again like just same way that that clock that broken clock is right twice a day you know these individuals that you that you overlooking like they got some some knowledge some some insight they got something of value that you can utilize to help you move forward in your entrepreneurial journey so don't discount them so Point four, these are kind of like your action steps, you know, how we go think and move, moving forward. And so here, here it is. You want to be coachable. You want to be driven and you want to be willing to go after what you want. Those are pretty much your three action steps here. So pretty self-explanatory, you know, be coachable and that be open-minded. That's ultimately what it means to be coachable. Be open-minded. Don't be so closed-minded that you... Think that you know it all, and anytime somebody is telling you something that's outside of your personal realm of knowledge, you're just trying to disqualify it or discredit the person just in the name of what you know. Because what you know is only good enough to help you. What you know is good enough to help you get is what you know is good enough to help you get into the problem that you have, but what you know isn't good enough to help get you out of that problem. You're gonna need new knowledge to help you get out of that problem, new way of thinking. As they say, you're gonna have to think outside, get thinking outside of your box in order to help you move forward. All right. So that's why you gotta be coachable. Again, next, be driven. So even even though you don't necessarily might not have necessarily clarity per se in in the exact A, B, C, D, E, F, G to Z that you want to, you know, the exact steps that you want to take to get from where you're at to where you want to be, you know, still be driven, you know, still always remember, you know, have that confidence and, and have that courage to just believe in your ability to learn and figure things out and just do that, you know, have that, have confidence in that. And then, like I said, with do courage and move forward. But be driven, you know, like always be yearning for more, always be yearning for knowledge, always be, you know, trying to have conversations with people, even if they're employees, you know, have conversations with them because you just never know where that golden nugget of wisdom is going to come from. And the last thing you want to do is 
have somebody, let's just say you have somebody in your, uh, your, your circle, but because you might just think that they are whatever they are, you're just not, you know, taking, taking them serious, which means you're not really talking to them. But then, you know, down the line, let's just say weeks, days, years down the line, you actually talk to this person and they give you some, some just crucial gain that just opens your mind up to a whole new level of understanding. And lo and behold, you could have had that same knowledge and game and understanding and that clarity at the end of the day, years ahead or days ahead or weeks ahead or months ahead. But just because you were closed minded and, and, and allowed what you knew to tell you to not take this person seriously, then you, you ultimately had to go through unnecessary stress and strife. All right. So don't discount the knowledge. Don't discount the game. You know, understand that, you know, there's a lot of wisdom. And, and there's a lot of people who have who have done in a lot of things, you know what I mean? So the, the knowledge and game, you never know where it's going to come from. So always be open minded to it. All right. So on that note, how to find a mentor as an as an inspired entrepreneur to recap, realize that, you know, the same way you would if your kid wants to play basketball, the, the same way you would want to go find them the best coach so that they can learn. Same thing with you, you know, go find the best mentor that you can that, that you can find at that point in time to help you get over to help you make that transition from student to CEO. Next. Understand that it's going to be a lot easier to find a mentor if you're an employee and a lot more challenging to find a mentor when you're not an employee and you are an entrepreneur because you're going at it alone more often than not. But don't get discouraged, you know, keep putting one foot in front of the other because there is someone out there that is looking to mentor someone just like you. Next, understand that there's things that you know, there's things that you know that you don't know, and there's things that you don't know that you don't know. So keep an open mind, which leads us into our last point, which ultimately means being coachable, being driven, and being willing to go after what you want. So that closes us out for today. Thanks for tuning in. As always, um, don't forget to stop by billionairebelief.com. If you've been, you know, if you feel it's challenging, if you have this great business idea, but it's challenging because you don't know how to get started and you know you don't have a clear path to business success, then go to billionairebelief.net to download the Beyond Observation Roadmap. That at least is going to give you some clarity in regards to the different transformations that you're going to have to go through to get from student to CEO and everything that you're going to need to, the basic foundational fundamental elements that you're going to need to know and learn in order to make that happen. And then next, um, just be sure to share this with someone, share it with a friend, you know, share it with someone. That's my challenge to you. Like there's someone out there who needs this knowledge, who can uh, benefit from this message. So share this, this podcast with them, share this, this show with them. And most importantly, be an entrepreneur. You know, don't give up. Never quit. That's the only way you can lose is if you quit. All right. So on that note, this is Dan Crowley with the Billionaire Believe Show. It's been a pleasure. Make it a great day. Peace.